Hello YouTube, Shin Tiger Curl here, that dude in the straw hat bringing you yet another awesome video. Normally I don't do a review for Wednesday nights, but it's a very special night. Tonight, live on the WWE Network from the Full Sail University, another NXT TakeOver special, this time called Respect. And this one perhaps has the most hyped and most anticipated main event in a long time already can't tell by the thumbnail, you don't really need to be watching this shit. But anyway, if you haven't watched NXT TakeOver, um, respect, pause this video, log on the WWE Network, or sign into it, and watch this event. You will not, you will not be displeased. But anyway, how was it? It's my notes, let's get started. First off, we enter the final matches for the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. A few months ago, I mean, well, a couple of, I wouldn't say a month or weeks ago, William Regal, in honor of, of the man who helped make NXT what it is today, and who had a hand in pretty much anyone who has wrestled in NXT up until this point, Dusty Rhodes, uh, passed away. Of course, we all know that. So, in honor of him, William Regal decided to host this very special tournament called the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, where several tag teams will compete for the honor of a trophy in honor of the American Dream. We already received our final, we've already made it through a, a very stacked bracket featuring some of the best talent in the, in the roster, but now we're down to the final two mat, the finals with the final four teams. And the first matchup, Finn Balor, NXT Champion, and Samoa Joe, face off against the team of Dash and Dawson. Now this is my, actually my first time seeing these boys in action uh, because I've been skipping a lot lately. But anyway, Dash and Dawson, I really like them because they remind me of the Brain Busters. There was a Bobby Heenan team from the, uh, from the, from the Golden Age, from the 80s. Uh, they were a very solid tag team, very straightforward, very smash mouth. Well, not exactly smash mouth, but very efficient. They were a textbook tag team, and Dash and Dawson are no different. They're very straightforward, their, their tag team work is impeccable, and there's just no, there's, there is no need to have a gimmick with them. Their gimmick is that there's a, a, a tag team that's just great. But it was a good match. Uh, Finn actually got his leg injured, kayfabe, and, but he was still able to and pull off the coup de grace after Samoa Joe hit his muscle buster for sending the, the team, their team, to the finals. Next up, another team I've not been uh, very familiar with, Jordan, Jordan, yes, I think Jesse Jordan and Clark Gable, I'm not, or I'll just call them Jordan and Gable, but anyway, versus the team of Rhino and the Lone Wolf Baron Corbett. This was a fantastic fucking match, mostly, but I will give this to Jordan and Gable. I didn't give them a lot of credence because of the dubstep boys, because of my experience with the dubstep boys, a, uh, the former tag team champions, or NXT tag team champions, um, I even forgot their names, they were just so generic in who they were and what they did, but Jordan Gable, these boys need some belts. Seriously, they are a phenomenal tag team, they both have amateur backgrounds, they have, they're, they almost have a almost. I'm gonna harken back to the world's greatest tag team. You know, Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin, probably one of the most technically proficient tag teams of the ruthless aggression era. Fantastic, phenomenal work. There, I have yet to see a team that is has that much technical skill in the WWE in a long time, and they're just fantastic. And Rhino and Baron Corbin make, Corbin make a very solid tag team. They've back, big battled back and forth over the months, but have teamed up for this tournament. This was a phenomenal tag team match, and Jordan and Gable are definitely over with the crowd. The crowd loves Gable, and Jordan plays as a straight man very good. This is a, a, an amazing tag team. But nevertheless, unfortunately, after a very close, intense matchup, Rhino and Corbin move on to the finals. Uh, next up. Divas in women's action as Dana Brooke, alongside Emma, takes on the newest sign from New Japan Pro Wrestling, Asuka. And I will say, this chick is a beast. 
I mean, a lot of female, a lot of divas in the WWE, if you slap them, they get mad or they cry or they run away. Dana slaps, um, Dana slaps Asuka. She smiles. And then just proceeds to all of them to just haul off and beat the shit out of her. Just turn her into a fucking pretzel. Using, and, and she wins it using a variation of Bob Backlund's patented cross-faced chicken wing. Or she calls it the Asuka lock. Fucking awesome move. And she wins the match. Uh, Dana just tries to, tries to back attack her, but Asuka ain't having that shit. She gives an eye to Emma, who can't even meet her eye because she knows, you next bitch. Oscar is a beast, and this is a this is a warning to the rest of the of the of the divas rosters to the, on the main roster. You need to step your game up because if you don't, this bitch is gonna kill you. Anyway, next match: Prince Pretty, Tyler Breeze, and the undefeated Apollo Cruz face off. This is a nice match. Apollo and Breeze have very good chemistry together. They both showcase their unique talents very well in this match. But Apollo Crews wins it with his move that he does. I don't know what you call it, but it's sort of like a reverse, like a foot power bomb. It, it, it's a cool move. I just can't describe it right now. I know, I know Griffin or Legato or any one of my other fans who, who are in the who are in the comment section all the time. They're probably going to tell me what it is, and I thank you in advance for it. But good match. Next up, the finals of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Corbin and Rhino versus Finn Balor and Joe. Very good matchup. Not as good as the uh, previous tag match with um, Jordan and Gable, but this was a very solid match. Interesting this is psychology, very st good storytelling, nice back and forth between all four of these guys, but in the end, Finn Balor and Samoa Joe pick up the win, and they are the champions. And we have a small ceremony as um, Cody Rhodes, not Stardust, Cody Rhodes, his wife Jojo, who is the um, ring announcer for this, I believe her name is Jojo, but his, his the ring announcer for um, NXT is um, Cody's wife, uh, Dustin Rhodes, not Gold Dust, and I believe the woman who is their mother, who is and Dusty's Dusty's widow, came into the ring with the trophy, and Cody cuts a very somber promo and says that. Um, if his father were still alive, he'd be very proud, and that as of tonight, everyone is a member of the Rhodes family, and just very good, very good to have. So, congratulations to Finn and Joe, you earned it. Final match, the main event, first time ever in NXT history, a women's match will be main eventing an NXT TakeOver event. Sasha Banks, Bailey. 30 minute Iron Man match. The last time these two faced at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, it changed the game for female professional wrestling in this company, if not in the country. And tonight, they stand to make history by not only being the main event, but for the first time ever on WWE television or a WWE product female title it will be defended in not some stupid ass gimmick match like a bra and panties match or a strip search match or a or, or, or a mud ball match or any kind of degrading type of match archetype that makes them nothing less than oogle material no this is an Iron Man match for those of you who don't know an Iron Man match is a match in, when, in which two competitors face off for, at a, for a set determinate time, amount of time the winner is the one who has gotten the most decisions in that time. I say decisions, not pinfalls or submit, not just pinfalls or submissions, but disqualifications and countouts. Whoever has the most by the end of that time limit, in this case, 30 minutes, will be declared the winner. And there was a lot of hype for this match. I was on Twitter. Uh, members of the New Day, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods were hyped for this match. Mick Foley was hyped for this match. A few of my friends from the WrestleCast were very hyped for this match. I see you, Matty J and T-Dub. Ah, uh, everyone was hard. hype. I even went so far as to say my dick is hard for this match. Not because the women are beautiful, but because, this, because the last match they had was fan-fucking-tastic. And even they had some very notable people out in ringside. Not just Bailey's family, but also um, Charlotte, Becky Lynch, uh, 
Stephanie McMahon, right there. Kevin Nash, Hideo Itami, Funaki, just a good all-star cast. But anyway, I can't even begin to describe this match. All I can say is see it. There is so much cool and awesome shit in this match that I can't do it justice. I know there's some of you out there that want me to go deep map detail by detail what goes on in this match, but I just can't because I don't want to rob you of the pleasure. This match is fantastic. It it was fantastic. It made Becky, I mean it made Bailey look like an absolute force of nature. I mean she brought out a side of herself that I never thought we'd see. And we saw Sasha Banks elevate her heel level to legendary because she made a kid cry. When you can make a kid cry, you have achieved heel nirvana. Because it's a bad you to make them boo you is not good enough. You have to elicit an emotional response. And Sasha Banks did that in this match. And there were so many cool spots, I'm not even gonna spoil it. This was just an epic, 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 epic match. And uh and uh, I'll just tell you the end that um the it was down to the last three minutes. Sasha and Bailey were tied. Sasha locks in the bank statement for the last two minutes or so, and because and during through most of the last couple the last half of this match, Bailey was working on Sasha's hand because Sasha did the same thing to her in Brooklyn, and it kind of couldn't she couldn't lock in the bank statement well enough, so she just manipulated her hand. And we're going down to the last thirty seconds, and Bailey locks in a submission move I've never seen her use before. She may have used it before, I've never seen it before, so it's up to you, where she just cranks back on her arms and just, oh my god. It looks like a variation of the Saturn's rings that Perry Saturn used to use. It was, oh my god, it was painful. Mm. Just fucking painful. Ugh. But in the last 10 seconds, Sasha submits. The bell rings, the match is over. See that? Right there. Bailey. Three wins to Sasha's two. Bailey retains. And the entire NXT universe gives her a standing gives them both a standing ovation. The entire locker room comes out on, on the on the ramp and just applauds both women. Stephanie gives uh, ba uh, uh, Bank Sasha a bouquet of flowers and Triple H comes in the ring with a bouquet of flowers and the first thing he does is, is hug Bailey and just gives her her moment and it is a well deserved moment and I'm gonna quote a friend of mine on the CBR wrestling forum the invisible man if he's watching this what's up and he says and I quote I hope every diva any performer who comes into this business and does not have this pas the passion for it saw this match and felt shame. Shame. And he's right. This is what I've been saying all along for the reason why the, the main roster divas don't get as much respect or love as much as the, as the, as the, as the women do on NXT. It's because the divas, the, the women on NXT and everyone who came from NXT have passion. They want to not just be good but to be great and not just say they're great but to actually show that they're great this is why I hate people like the Bella Twins and Alicia Fox and everyone else who just skate by on being average or good you don't this match just show that not only can women main event a pay, a major event but steal the fucking show and unfortunately I'm not even gonna say to the Bella Twins or Nikki Bella to try to match that because it is impossible for her to do that. Sasha Banks is the best heel that the Divas division has. She is the most complete wrestler on the cat on the on the on the on the ro on their roster. And she is pretty much everything the Bella Twins wish they were. She's a bitch, but she can actually hang. She can take you to the limit. And she can put you, she can stretch you like a fucking piece of pretzel. 
like Laffy Taffy and shit and make you tap out. She's not, she's not bitchy because she thinks she's the best. She's bitchy because she knows it. And Fortnite, and this is, and I'm not even gonna, because there's no way that anyone on the main roster can match that. You can't, it's impossible. So I'm not gonna say take notes, Bellas, because the Bellas will never be able to match that. That would be like asking Rusev and Dolph Ziggler to match, um, to, to wrestle a match equivalent to Steamboat Savage at WrestleMania. Or Hart Michaels at WrestleMania. You just can't do that with them. They have, they're good, they're just not going to be ever that good. And I give, a, I, take tip, I take off my hat to you, Bailey. And Sasha Banks, you've shown us that indeed women that di not that divas don't need to be given a chance; they just take it. They took this chance and they ran with it. The world was watching them, expecting greatness, and they more than they more than ever delivered. So thank you, Sasha Banks and Bailey. You two win. You two win. So, that was NXT TakeOver Respect. My thoughts? Do I need to say it? Do I even need to fucking say it? Every match on this card was at, at the very worst good, at the very, at the very most bad, great. I'm even going to say probably the weakest match on the card was probably the first one. And that's only because it was just good. It just was getting us into the shit. I'm not saying that the first match was terrible. It was just compared to everything else. It wasn't. It 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 was. Just, it just comes out as good. Not to say it's bad. It was just the weakest of the bunch, which is saying something with this match. Jordan and Gable, I got my eye on you. You two deserve a belt. Oscar, marry me. Marry me and I'll slap you all you want and you can smile that sick little grin and you can beat my ass all you want. Just marry me. Marry me. The, the, the end of that, 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 that tag team classic tournament was amazing. Nice to see Dustin for the first time after um, Dusty's funeral. The main event. I just spent the last fucking five minutes talking about it. What do you think I think about it? But yeah, that's my video. Like what you see? Link, comment, subscribe below. Got any questions, comments, or you just want to be like me and just fanboy on this shit? Leave it below. I will join you in that shit. <laughs> uh, you want to switch the channel? The like button is down there. You know what to do. Advertisements are all over here. You know what to do. The tip jar is up here. You know what to do. So, until next time. Shin Tiger Curl, that dude with the straw hat, taking off his straw hat and bidding great respect and admiration to Bailey and Sasha Banks. I love you.